This is Jason Anderson, Chairman of the Killingly Town Council, and we are calling this meeting to order. Um, today is April 1st, and it's currently 8.03 a.m. Uh, for roll call purposes, all council members are in attendance, except for Mr. Whitehead and Ms. Wakefield, who are both absent with notification, and Ms. George is joining us remotely. At this time, we'll open up for public comment. Uh, Ms. Colorio, did anything get submitted? We did not receive any public comment prior to the meeting. Right, thank you. Um, anyone who would like to make any public comment, please step up to the podium and state your name and address. Uh, with this being a special meeting, we just ask that any comments be related to items on tonight's uh, this morning's agenda. Any public comment? Last call for public comment. Seeing none, we'll move on on the agenda. Ms. Coloria, would you like to start, please? I will. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Um, so this is the budget presentation for the town's operating budget side at 10 o'clock. The Board of Education will begin their presentation around the Board of Education's um, budget proposals. Um, so I just... Uh, We'll be starting and I'll try and direct you through the uh, budget book as we go along. Um, but the intent is really to try and get through page by page. If you have any questions as we go through, please ask them as we go along. Um, in the development of this budget, um, on the town side, I've worked very closely with all the department heads and they respectively have worked with their staff as well in the, in the creation of the budget. And I will say that I want to First and foremost, thank all of the staff in, come, in the way in which they approach their budget. Um, the staff is very conscious of taxpayer funding and very conscious of how it is spent. Um, and so they are very diligent in trying to find um, innovative ways to be cost effective on things and to mitigate inflationary costs and things like that. So um, I do appreciate all of their hard work and really thinking outside the box in trying to come up with uh, different ways of handling things. But they did a really great job. Um, and what you have before you for the town side is largely the increases are related to inflationary um, impacts. Um, there's not really any significant um, additions or proposals to new services um, outside of the uh, change or the continued um, uh, change with the law enforcement in that I am proposing the addition of two additional constables, but the reduction of one resident state trooper, which completely offsets the cost of the two constables. Um, so resident trooper it, it is one resident state okay. trooper yes I and the, the only um, the only factor that's been not fully determined but has not been um, I shouldn't say hasn't been fully determined we're allowed to go down to one resident state trooper the the state can at some point determine that, that the town needs to have oh Patty George can't hear anything um, <clears throat> Jen do you want to do you want Patty's number Hang on one minute. I just want to get Patty the. Those are her two numbers. Do you want to picture that yep. and then yep. no, see if you can get a hold of her? Yep. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so um, the state can at some point, the state PD can at some point uh, d decide that the town, instead of just having a resident state trooper um, assigned, that we are required to have a, uh, a resident state trooper sergeant, which is a uh, higher cost threshold. But it'll depend on how much uh, work and demand um, is placed on the resident state trooper position um, from from this office. I will say that we have um, very experienced staff and so um, if anything we tend to take work off of the resident state super sergeant um, at the barracks because our guys are very um, astute in 
knowing how to develop a police report and case loads and case flow and all of that. So um, that's been, um, so as of right now, I have had the conversation with the new lieutenant that's at the, at Troop D, Lieutenant um, Cody. Um, and we are proceeding with a, with retaining one resident state trooper. Um, so um, on page A3, um, is a uh, just an overall summary chart of the numbers. Um, I don't want to dive too far deep into this um, at this point because we'll go through all of these categories more in far more detail. But overall, the general government side of the budget after offsetting revenues um, associated with general government side, um, the increase or proposed increase to the mill rate is 0.5, is 0.56. Um, and then on the education side, um, after offsetting the uh, proposed education budget with the education revenues, the mill rate impact, proposed mill rate impact is 1.39, which is uh, accumulating to the proposed increase of 1.95 mil mills. Um, I did include in the budget um, two utilizations of fund balance. One is uh, the same fund balance utilization that we did last year for road renewal. I kept the, util the uh, dedication to road renewal the same, level funded at $2.5 million, which is uh, uh, $250,000 within the operating budget and the remaining $2,250,000 out of fund balance. The other utilization of fund balance that I have, per that I have requested use of is $500,000 for the replacement of the library roof. The library roof is in um, a state, it, it has had some active leaks that we've been trying to repair, but it is definitely at its end of its useful life and those repairs are not going to um, last for um, a, any significant period of time. So uh, we need to get that one replaced. So the, I'm, I'm requesting the activa activation of fund balance for that purpose. Um, I did include at page A8 um, the summary of the unrestricted fund balance comparison so you could have an understanding of um, where our fund balance um, levels have been at. And so we are still reflecting an estimated fund balance number for FY21-22 for that. So that's for fiscal year ended June 30th of 2022. The audit has not yet been completed. Um, <clears throat> we are still awaiting for the auditors to come out. I know that the Board of Education's uh, business manager and the town staff has been working towards that reconciliation uh, over the last uh, several weeks. Um, and hopefully the auditors will be able to come out in the next um, couple of weeks. So we would likely not really be seeing what those final numbers are until May. But I think that based on where we're at, these are it's a we don't anticipate any significant changes to that number. Um, we also have populated an estimated number for this current fiscal year, and I will say that when we estimate that number, we do so very conservatively. We recognize that we are still within an active um, operating budget, and expenditures may come come up between now and the end of the year. So we are conservative on what we what we determine would be potential turnbacks. Um, so that way we're not overestimating how much your fund balance is going to be at the end of the current fiscal year. So this is very conservative. Um, so we expect that we will complete the fiscal year fully expending the $2,045,000 out of fund balance that was dedicated through the budget process um, with a 24.1% um, fund balance which is still a very healthy fund balance. So by dedicating or appropriating the 2750000 that's proposed in this current budget, it leaves a fund balance percentage of 19.3%, which, which is still a good fund balance. Um, it is within our um, fund balance guidance range um, and would be still well received by our credit rating agencies. Um, any questions on that fund balance? Uh, what is that guidance range, just to refresh our memories for the fund balance? <clears throat> yeah, so um, we our fund balance range is between um, 15 and 20 percent 
Um, we really, and we have, um, you know, if we drop, we are allowed to drop below 15. We are allowed to go down, I believe, as low as 12 um, before we have to start taking proactive steps to um, start replenishing those funds. But 15 to 20 is really our range. Um, and being at the 19, we're still at the upper end of that range. So we're in, we're in good shape. And does our fund balance include monies we the ARPA money we had received? No. Okay. Thank you. No, that's a separate fund. That was my question as well. Hi, Patty. Is that you joining us now? No, she's not muted. Okay, she's still working on it. Um, so this is just the general funds unrestricted fund balance. So any funds that we would receive that have restriction like ARPA funds are not included in this because this is the unrestricted, which means there are no guideposts around it. The town council has full authorization over that. Okay. Um, the next, uh, page that I put in here, um, is new a nine, um, and really, this was to give, you know, one thing that I hear on a regular basis is, what does a mill rate even mean to me, right? Like, what does 1.95 mills even mean? I, you know, it's hard to understand what that means from a tax perspective. What is my tax bill actually going to be? So these are examples, and I, and I just want to stress that these are examples. They're, um, everybody's property value is different and unique, and so um, this may not be representative of anybody's individual properties, but you have a general understanding of what your property value might be, so you can kind of understand where it might be. If, you, if an individual wants to look up what is my, the exact impact to my property, I have provided two links in the document. One is to our GIS, the property record cards. That will show you what is actually the assessed value of your property. So if you're not sure of what your, what your property is, what your what your assessed value is, um, I encourage you to look it up, especially since you know there's been a lot of market activity over the last several years. Um, just because you bought a house in the last couple of years does not mean that that house, the price that you purchased it at may not be what's reflected on the property card. We do our revaluation every five years, right? And so your value that's on the property card may be substantially less because we're going off of 2018 values not current values, right? So you really should look at what that is. Um, and I also added there the link to the tax calculator. So you can then take your assessed value, you can plug it in and you can see what is the actual tax impact to the individual taxpayer. Just a quick note to add that we are going through the reval this year. So whatever someone's taxes are right now, um, that could be changing going forward based on yeah so everybody's know. been getting data mailers in the mail to confirm what their information so by statute we're required to do a revaluation every five years that puts our revaluation at october 1st of 2023 so that will be uh completed for october 1st of 2023 which will impact your grand list your tax payment if you will for the july 1st of 2024 right so it goes out another, a whole nother year. I think we're ending our WebEx meeting and trying to reboot it. We're trying to still get Patty on. Thank you, Jen, for trying to get that worked out. Now, I do have one question. So the package that we have uh, before us today, is that available on the town's website? It right is. Now? Okay. Available on the website. I also have packets at the library, town clerk's office, town manager's office. Okay. Um, I just wanted to ask in case anybody's watching at home um, and didn't know where to yep. get this information. Thank they you. are they are online. Um, so again, this is just um, to better understand what would that potential annual tax dollar increase be. And I also did include the monthly amount only because there are, especially now with the new banking regulations, if anybody's recently purchased purchased a home, while in the past you would have not you would have been able to opt out of an escrow. You're not as likely to opt out of an escrow now. Um, and so many people are wondering, well, how is it going to impact my monthly mortgage payment? Because your escrows are, your taxes are, are rolled up into that mortgage payment. So what does that actually mean 
for me on a monthly basis. Um, so I included a monthly breakdown of that as well, just for that purpose. Um, and again, this is based, the numbers that you see here before you are based on the full budget, should it be passed in the, in the, as it's presented to you right now. <clears throat> So um, the B pages are really summary pages. I'm not really going to go into them um, uh, a whole lot, <clears throat> but they are high-level summary pages. <clears throat> I'm going to skip to the revenue pages, the green pages, if anybody, if everybody can. And we'll start getting through the meat and potatoes, if you will, of the budget. So on the revenue pages, the first page that you're looking at, the very uh, first piece of this that I want to draw your attention to is the Lake Road Generating Agreement. <clears throat> so that one, uh, we, as you are aware, we're still within negotiations with the pilot. The pilot, the payment in lieu of tax agreement that we had with Lake Road Generating expired in the previous fiscal year. Um, we are in negotiations to look at potentially doing another long-term um, agreement. However, we have not uh, concluded that, that um, or um, come to a, an agreement on that at this point. So uh, we did have an independent um, appraisal done of the property, and we have shown on the grand list our, the independent appraisal value. That has resulted in the $7 million in tax revenue. In prior years, we were rec um, the, under the pilot, we were seeing um, about $3 million um, in revenue um, that has been utilized in the budget to offset taxes. Um, you will note, and I am going to have you flip. I heard her for one second. Hi, Patty. Are you there? I heard Patty. Patty, are you there? Now we can hear her, but she still can't hear us. All right. Um, so I am going to have you flip back to the blue page um, B2 for one moment. <clears throat> so um, a point to make is that um, we are still in negotiations with this, and also the taxpayer, like Regenerating, has appealed that, um, that grand list assessment. So they are going to be going through the court process on that. <clears throat> As um, in order to meet or um, in an effort to address some of the council's um, concerns around funding capital projects, what I have done here is reflected only a slight increase in utilization of revenue for the budget and the remaining balance being uh, just under $4 million um, on the end of the B pages were under capital improvements. There's a number $3,996,000. That is the funding from Lake Road Generating that is getting appropriated to capital improvements. So instead of supplanting the entire $7 million to off to, into the budget, um, which would be a, a substantial um, uh, challenge to... Um, have an increase in, in you know 10 years when that revenue oh. goes away you would have a substantial um, increase to your tax base for that re for that loss of revenue um, moving that uh, or funding capital projects you would be able to get capital projects completed without having to go into a borrowing status which without so you wouldn't be incurring borrowing costs you won't be incurring interest costs and the town will then have a sustainable um, uh, rev local revenue source to use as matching funds um, that currently we have to e we have to usually borrow for um, or raise mill rate in order to be able to um, make those capital projects happen. We'll still go after all those grants, but most of the grants there's very very few and far between 100% grants. They're typically an 80/20. Many of them are 50/50, and when you start talking about millions of dollars, that number can climb pretty quickly for a local match. So this would give an opportunity for that. It would also provide an opportunity for the council. Over the past two years, the council has utilized over $2 million for road renewal for capital projects. You're not going to be able to continue to use fund balance in that method. 
on an annual basis. This would be able to transition to utilizing those resources as opposed to fund balance because you're going to have to come off of that utilization of fund balance. So I just want to make sure I understand we don't see the other $3 million uh, that is in the $7 million here, and right. it would be it's revenue. in the fund balance at some point? Yeah, so it's just... Just not reflected here. So it is reflected. It's, it it's, it's, um, it's not broken out separately. Okay. Um, it's, all, it's just considered revenue, and that revenue goes to overall decrease the mill rate. Okay. It just con it's considered as general fund revenue, so it's 3.1 no, I mean, million. It's not reflected on the blue page. Correct. The yeah. blue page is only expenditures. Okay. Oh, well, that's that makes only sense. expenditures that you're seeing right there. Yeah. Okay. Now I do have one question. So the projected fund balance for the 23-24 fiscal year that put us at the I believe it was 19.3%, um is that reflective <laughs> Um, so that does not include leg row generating. Okay. All right. We did not incorporate okay. anything with regards to that. Okay. Thank you. With respect to the leg road, now, because they were going to the courts, do they have, what do they have, oh. with respect to lake road generating and they're, they're in the courts contesting the assessment and all of that. What do they have to pay? Is there a minimum that they have to pay, or is there? So they they are still required to pay the full, the full tax bill, um, or if they don't, they end up having interest accrues until the um, tax appeal court determines what the final number is, and then they would only have to pay outstanding interest based on that new amount. That being said, if they do pay the full amount. Um, we would likely need to put, you know, our auditors would recommend that we put a reserve around um, a certain percentage of that because as the tax appeal proceeds, um, it's, you know, it's, it can, it could be, could be that the tax, that we settle somewhere in, in between. And so the town would then have to refund. So we would actually put a reserve around a, a certain percentage of that. Um, and set it aside in the case until the tax appeal is settled. And then we would know exactly how much would have to be refunded, but we wouldn't be expending those funds and then having to figure out how to recoup them. They would be on a set aside and handling any of that settlement as we uh, proceed forward. Now, if we did have to ref if they did pay the full amount, we did have to refund it. Would we be Hi, Mary. responsible? Hi, Patty. Hi. Oh, yes, we got it. Okay, thanks, Jen. All right, bye. Um, would the town be responsible to pay interest on that refund to Lake Road Generating at that point? Um, to my knowledge, no. Okay. But, but, but what can we, rea in, in reality, what can we expect them to be paying? I mean, there's, there's a, is there a minimum? You know, because it's in tax appeal, that's a, that's a yep. nightmare. So I think that the real the, the town should realistically expect them to pay the full amount. That is what the corporations do when they file tax appeal, because they don't want to they don't want to have the exposure of having accumulated interest and potential liens to be filed against a property, even during a tax appeal. They will pay the full amount. It's a matter of whether or not the town utilizes all of those resources or um puts uh reserves around them for a period of time as we go through that process yeah i think that i'm confused too so you see it in general fund and then you see half of it in expenditures. So you were talking about the matching fund. Is it just going to sit the imaginary, not yet, obtain money in? Yeah, the four million you'll see when we get into the capital improvement plan. Some of it has been allocated to capital projects, but those capital projects are not ones that we will be able to necessarily kick off on July one. They still have to go through planning stages, and we have a lot of 
um, heavy lift capital projects that are underway right now. We only have so you know. So if it didn't come through, those would just be put on the back burner. We would we would pace them out as and okay. prioritize them as okay. as we're comfortable with what resources we have. Okay. Very similar to how we treat some of our state grant funding, like Town Aid Roads, right? Town Aid Road funds. We know the state has already told us how much money we're getting in Town Aid Road funds. Sometimes we don't see it until next June, right? So we don't spend that money until it's in the bank because what we have had happen with the state is they'll tell us now you're getting X amount in Town Aid Road, and then in January they cut it in half. So when we get it in June, it's half of what they originally said. So we typically will wait and delay the expenditure on that so that way we know that we have the right amount of money that we're spending. Any other questions on that one? But see, that, that's an area where I keep getting comments from different people that, yeah, now it's in the courts. Why can't we force them, we all the rest of us pay, because we don't want to go to court, but they have enough money to go to court. So th they're I, not I, the I, only ones that go to court, though. Oh, no, we have a lot of, no, we have no, a lot no, of our no, corporations, just, not a lot. Yeah. We, have, we have a handful of our corporations that, that go through the tax appeal process on a fairly regular basis, um, especially when we get through a re revaluation time frame. Mm -hmm. um, it's you know, kind of almost standard practice for some of them, that that's, that's just the process that they go through. Um, and anyone has the, everyone has the right to um, appeal their their assessments. Well, that's what I try to tell them. You Everyone has right that. You want to appeal and you want to do what these people can do, but you don't have the funds to do it, so you stick with it. But that's just where it's a process. Like that, well, that, that's also why we have a board of assessment and appeals too. Correct. Uh, yeah. That people can come before them, no problem, and that's free as far as I know to come yeah. before. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, but uh, generally they would want to have some proof. So if right. you're going before them and you're saying that your assess your your re re residential real estate uh, assessment is incorrect, they right. would want to see an appraisal or something. Of so course, if you've yeah. recently had it appraised, what is that appraisal yeah, and how is it refuted? Right. I'm talking about legal expenses though. Yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in, in general with this there, just more of a comment than anything. I mean, it makes sense there that uh, right now we uh, – the the uh, the pilot programs ended, um, so here's your tax bill. But we're going to wisely put it in reserves just in case things happen with court, like you said, and that way there we don't spend that money. Then all of a sudden be on the hook to repay any of that money. Right. It, I think that's the smarter way of handling it all. I did reasonably activate um, about a little over a hundred thousand dollars in an increase in the revenue to try and help offset some you know, some little bit of a mill rate. But again, it's trying to be conservative on that just as this process continues to go through. Do you have any time frame of how long it'll be in? No. No time frame at all? None. It could be months. It could be years. Solar tax appeals that happened last revaluation in 2018. Some of them are just settling now for perspective so it, it, it can take some time or it can be a lot shorter and again we are so we are not just waiting for tax appeal either we are continuing to negotiate so we may come to a negotiated settlement in that process as well um, but right now we are basing our value based on the independent appraisal that we had completed and that's what's reflected here The other um, items um, on this page, the um, licensing and permitting um, is essentially just a little bit of an increase. Um, we have seen some increase in um, building permit activity. Um, so we're just conservatively <coughs> watching that. This year you're seeing a big number for building permits. That was Frito-Lay. We don't expect that to be repeated for next year. Um, <clears throat> and then, um, the next group, fines and fees, are um, relatively flat, just a, min a minor decrease in that, and that is really around the library fines and fees. But overall, that library fines and fees, while we went fine-free, we are no longer fining, we still have a substantial amount of fees that we do still collect um, at the library, and that's the revenue from that. Uh, the next grouping, use of money, um, interest income. Um, we did recognize um, an increase in 
um, interest income. Um, we've had some uh, recent maturities of CDs that we were able to roll to higher interest rates. Um, and we are continuing to look at that to see if we can activate some higher interest rate um, earnings there, but um, we're comfortable at the 95. Um, the communication tower lease, this is um, what we have for leases between the highway garage and here at the town hall. And if you recall, um, one of, uh, which one was it? It wasn't AT&T. It was the Sprint. Sprint. AT&T got back on the pole. They're part of Sprint. They took their Sprint stuff off the pole, right? Or T-Mobile, right? It was T-Mobile came back on the pole. Sprint went off the pole. So um, it's just because cell networks combine. And so they've taken off. So... Um, that's what our cellular, our, our leases are. Next page. What yep. about the, um, I heard things about the Davis property, the gravel operation. That that's a separate fund. That's in the, um, that's further into one of the separate funds. We okay. receive gravel off, we receive revenue from there, but it goes into a dedicated fund for the final restoration of that property. Okay, that's mm -hmm. So we don't utilize that for general fund. Next page is really, um, the first part of it is uh, state grants. So these are the revenues that are we receive directly from the governor's budget um, and what the expected revenue is for each of those pieces. One line item that I wanna just highlight for you, the municipal grant and aid. No, is it municipal stabilization? That's the revenue yep. sharing, right? Municipal stabilization, okay. sorry. Municipal stabilization, that grant. When we start talking about spending cap, so in my budget message, I talked about spending cap. Back in 2018, 19, the legislation passed legislation that um, puts a cap on municipal spending at two and a half percent annually, right? And if we go above that threshold, if our expenditures, if we increase it more than two and a half percent from the prior year, based on a calculation, we run the risk of losing 50 cents for every dollar that we go over that spending cap, 50, 50 cents of this municipal stabilization grant would be reduced out when we would no longer be eligible for it. So we've done that calculation, the, the budget that you have presented before you. The, the second caveat they put to it was that it's 2.5% or current rate of inflation. Thankfully, this year they're using current rate of inflation because 2.5% would be really bad. Um, they're using 6.18%, right? That's their, that's their threshold for uh, spending cap calculation. We are at 6.111, right? So we are at 6.11% as presented to you right now on the spending cap. So we are not, what's presented to you right now is in compliance with that. So we don't have any, we're not risking the loss of any of that revenue. But I just wanted to highlight that for you so that when you talk about municipal spending cap, that's the revenue that's tied to that municipal spending cap. There is current legislation out there that they want to basically pool all of these state grants and the other state grant where it says municipal grant and aid, pool it all into one big category. That means that municipal, that municipal spending cap now impacts a whole lot more money than just that one piece, right? So that's just something, you know, to keep in the back of your head, but Right now, it's that two hundred and sixty-eight thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Now, I've got one question. You were talking about pooling all of it together. Would that include the Pequot Mohegan Fund, or would that be separate? No, that's still separate because I still are keeping the requirements around that. Okay. And so, if you look at the state's appropriation of uh, funding to municipalities, and you look at a town by town break, break, breakdown, um, the Pequot Municipal, the Pequot Mohegan Grant Fund. Killingly is listed as having a, um, an amount of 94000 for the town. However, we are not going to be eligible to receive that because we do not comply with the requirements of that grant. So <clears throat> it, we don't reflect the revenue here because we know that we're not going to comply with that. But if you were to look at the state and you were to look at a town-by-town -town breakdown, you're going to see Killingly has 94000 for that grant. They do list it but ultimately we end up not being qualified for it. So just, I want you to be aware of that. Um, one other question as far as that, I know there was a push in Hartford to increase the total uh, amount in that fund. Um, have you heard anything further on that? It, did that? There's still conversation about that. However, it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't come to fruition yet 
for this upcoming fiscal year. It may impact for future years, but what's currently being listed on a town by town perspective, Killingly's number was the same from the previous year of 94,000. Okay, thank you. Um, getting back to the Mohegan Pequot Fund Grant, I mean, I can't believe we're not taking advantage of this. So last year we didn't take advantage of it. This year we're not taking advantage of it. You know, we're looking at $180,000. I'm sure the Housing Authority could use $180,000. The Sewer Authority could use $180,000. If the Board of Ed doesn't want it, you know, uh, you know it, it's kind of, it's a kick in the teeth to the residents of the town. And, uh, you know, I heard comments at the Board of Ed meeting the other night, we gotta take advantage of all the grants that are available. Um, I just want to make one comment on that. If we refer back to what happened in 2019 in the municipal elections, if you look at the majority of the voters, um, majority of the voters, based off of how the votes went, um, they were in favor of um, the, the direction the Board of Ed has gone. Um, and one thing that I haven't heard recently is how much would it cost the town to comply with the guidelines in order to receive that $94,000. Is it going to exceed $94,000? Could it be $200,000? Um, so those are numbers I haven't heard in quite a while. And, and I don't believe we should take advantage of all grants that are available because of some of them leave you hostage, so, such as the um, Work Live Ride program. If you sign up for that, then you're under hostage of the state and taking away control from the municipality. I just had a question. Uh, so, when those grants is in there for the ninety four thousand or whatever, now you're saying one hundred and eighty something thousand. Is it just going to accumulate? So at some point, or is it no, just the it's state, not retroactive? Yeah, it's it's not retroactive. The state would, um, you know, if if the town were to decide to make changes around that, and we would then become eligible for it, it would only be what we would be eligible in the current year. We wouldn't. It wouldn't be retroactive. Um, the next section is charges for services, and these are just, uh, you know, direct charges that, you know, charges that we collect um, from, a, you know, a variety of departments. Um, the elderly housing uh, sewer reimbursement, this is the amount that the housing authority pays the town for their sewer bill. We, that's really kind of a, um, in an arrears, um, we, they pay us. We have an allotment to pay their current sewer bill when we get further down into the budget. They pay us for the previous. It allows them to better budget, right? So this is the assist, kind of one of those assistance levels that we do for the housing authority. Um, and it smooths out and gives them better abilities to um, make budget changes um, on their side because our budget processes don't align. So that's the revenue that we receive from the um, housing authority. District collections is just from the borough of Danielson. We, co we collect the borough of Danielson's um, fire district taxes. That's been an ongoing um, relationship for quite some time. Um, and we charge them um, staff and, um, and supply costs on, um, based on a uh, number of accounts. So it's all based off an MOU and a calculation. Uh, getting back to the, the elderly housing sewer reimbursement, the reason is like a, a one-year delay. It's like when we have a, when they're doing their budget and all of a sudden we're doing all at the same time, if we have a, a super increase in the sewer rates, we can absorb it and they have a year now to come up with. They have a way to plan. Them, yep. Amend their budget for that. So yeah. it gives them a bit of a break. And, right. uh, you know, maybe we're a year behind, but I mean, we got to help them out. And uh, they're on such a, their budget is so tight. Yeah. Uh, they're on a shoestring. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it's a shoestring. <laughs> yeah. So that little help that we can do and it gives them a, 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 a year, but they're still they're still paying, so it's not that much, but to them it's a big amount. Mm -hmm. uh, just going back for a question. So the spending cap includes the 
all of it, the school budget too? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yep, there are components that we're allowed to remove out of the spending cap, like special education, capital contributions, um, but all the regular operational costs are all town and board of education all together in that municipal spending cap. Um, the next page under other revenues, a lot of this is what you're seeing as uh, reimbursements from other funds. Um, generally, we have miscellaneous, which is just that miscellaneous. We have, you know, small amounts that come in um, for um, scrap metal um, that has accumulated over the year, as well as um, KERMA has been over the last nine years giving a um, uh, refund of premiums um, or a distribution of uh, dividend to their um, member towns. We've been uh, receiving that as well. This is where we recognize that revenue. Um, the uh, payments from the sewer operating fund, um, that number has decreased and that's because of debt service. So um, they had their initial debt service that came on the books for the wastewater treatment uh, plant upgrade. Um, it was last year was their first one. That's the highest. We always structure our debt with um, level principal payment, which means it's it decreases the total payment decreases over time because you're not you're paying less interest over time because you're paying more in principal um so that has gone down that debt payment has gone down so that's where that reduction is coming from and then um, the other increase that you're seeing there is law enforcement sro aso reimbursement so that is really from the board of education so on the town side of the of the fence, we have recognized the expenditures for the in the inclusion of the full ASO program and the existing SRO that we have um, designated to the Board of Education. And here's where we're recognizing the reimbursement from the Board of Education, right? Because these expenses are built into the Board of Education's budget, right? So we are washing it out on the town side to reflect that those expenditures are on the Board of Education side. So that's the um, <clears throat> that's the uh, increase there is really re reflecting that new ASO program. Um, the other section, the school, these are all school related um, revenues. Um, the uh, I, two changes: the school capital contribution, which is really in the bracket right above, that is related to um, tuition payments from Brooklyn for debt service associated to the high school. That was an agreement that was reached long ago. Brooklyn, and these two are tied together, the capital school capital contribution and regular tuition are kind of tied together. Brooklyn, the school always reaches out to Brooklyn to determine how many students they foresee they will be sending to KHS in the upcoming year. They were notified by Brooklyn that the, uh, the largest majority of their um, students are looking at going to Woodstock or Ellis um, and and not necessarily Killingly High School. So they have committed to a much smaller number of students. So the reduction that you're seeing in school capital contribution and regular tuition is really around that. Um, so that's a decrease of about $500,000 in revenue from that um, tuition relationship. Um, you know, it's possible that that there will be end up still end up being more students coming because both Woodstock and Ellis are application based, um, and you know uh, that may shift um, or students may change their mind. But um, this is what they felt was uh, appropriate to budget for. I just have one question. Back to the sewer operating fund. I know it's a reduction of two hundred sixty thousand dollars, but that's also reflected in expenditures, isn't it? Because we're not paying out. For that debt Correct. So the debt service, you'll see the reduction in the debt service on that side, and also <clears throat> the sewer user rates have a reduction. They have a Im the impact from that too. Um, <clears throat> any other questions on this? Okay. And then you're recognizing here. I'm showing the use of the fund balance. The 2.7 million is use of fund balance and revenues, and that wraps out revenues. Any other questions? Maybe one other comment I, I think I'd like to make is if we want to spend some money we, and we want to take a use of fund balance, now is the time that we have to do it. Um, if there's anything coming up, um, to have a supplemental appropriation mid-year, we don't 
want to do that. And yeah, it's doing the same thing, but if we do it during the budget process, it's easy to do. And the, the rating agencies don't look bad on us or, or whatnot. So that's this is the time to do it, and hopefully we don't have any issues. Uh, yeah. So we we've been pretty good mm -hmm. in the last few years, but yeah. I was through a couple, and it was we really took a beating on it when we did it. So. Yeah, so the, with regards to that, we are getting ready to prepare for a rating agency call because we are going to be issuing debt. Um, that's an impact within this budget is the debt issuance. This is the, as we had uh, discussed when we first, when the towns uh, approved the capital projects, um, we were coming into the 2024 year was going to be the first year of having to do repayment for debt issuance. So we are in the process of getting ready to um, go out to borrowing for seven million for debt issuance on the two projects. Um, capital uh, the uh, credit rating agencies view the utilization in your budgetary document as a planned utilization. When they see you do it in the middle of the year as a supplemental appropriation, they see it as very reactionary and they question why you didn't but why didn't you plan for that? So this is viewed as good planning. If you do it in the middle of the year, they get concerned that you're not really paying attention during your budget process. So um, to your point, it, it does make an impact. Um, but um, I don't foresee that we'll have any challenge or any issue with the credit rating agency. We've already reviewed this with our, um, with our consultants that assist us through that process, and they've been very favorable. Any other questions before we move over into expenditures? And now we're going to go into the D pages. I will say, not, there's not a huge amount of changes in many of the D pages, so. Um, I, hey, I don't know. I don't know. I've only ever done that once, and I don't want to repeat the circumstances of that day. So that was, that was a challenging day. So uh, town council, largely the biggest, in, the biggest change in this is just reflecting advertising, where we really feel advertising is going on a, on a regular basis. We really try and do a lot of, you know, Facebook pushes and stuff like that as opposed to print media. Um, and so uh, we find that that tends to be uh, more uh, uh, community friendly um, in that direction. So that's just reflecting the savings there. Um, any questions on town council's budget? Town manager's budget. Um, in the previous year, current year, I had budgeted for a full-time grant writer position. Unfortunately, we really haven't been able to find the right mix for that. And really what I decided to do was restructure that and share. We have a full-time position that we share really between three offices, my office, the finance office, and the highway department office. It's worked out well for coverage. Um, and so we restructured accordingly. And so that's provided some savings here and some savings in the highway department. It does, um, and it's helped offset some of the other market pressures that we've had for um, wages in other, um, in other departments. So um, that's really the change here. Um, I did decrease professional development simply because there's a lot now that's done online for free. Um, and so we take advantage of those. Kerma has a really extensive online program for free. Um, and so we really try and take advantage of those. And um, I'm, you know, not really looking at doing any, a lot of the um, national ones you can do um, remotely as well. There are times when it's good to go to them physically because sometimes it's really hard to participate when you're still in your office because everybody still comes in your office. Um, and you don't get as much in to that training as you need to but um, I think for right now um, it works fine where we're at so um, I was able to provide some savings there any other questions on that one legal services I'm leaving that one flat um, I really think that now that we're coming to the conclusion of the DAVCO trial we will see some relief but you never know what's gonna crop up next so I'm leaving that one alone <clears throat> but we have been within um, within budget on our legal fees for the past couple of years, so <clears throat> I'm going to leave that one alone. Does, does Lake Road generating come into that? That one is actually a reserve that we do. We've been doing a res we've been putting money into a reserve for that negotiation, which you're actually going to see an increased request in that, just because we are still actively trying to negotiate that. So, <clears throat> town clerk. 
<clears throat> contractual wage increases based on the union contract, and then just some uh, decreases related to um, watching historical trend and seeing what the current market looks like for their transactions. Um, we felt that there was some savings to um, achieve there. Any questions on town clerk? We'll go to finance. Yep. Uh, so you're saying all of 4.6% uh, 4, 4 increase in clerical? What is that, Mary? Yeah, so that is the that is because of the union wage increases. So we've had we also had some employee shift in that department. So we had one employee leave. We had another employee come in that was at a slighter, slightly higher pay scale, and so um, and then with the contractual wage increases. So that's what your differences are for the current year. Does early voting have any or what bearing that might have on the town court? I mean, that's in. Yeah, so the town clerk does handle the absentee balloting process. Um, <clears throat> and um, we have not incorporated any expenditures around early voting because the state, Secretary of State has been very loudly advocating and has in the past had the state provide grant funds to the towns to offset direct costs associated with expanded hours or expanded you know, if we needed to hire additional people in order to be able to process higher volumes, they've been able to do that. We actually still have residual funds from the last election grant process that we had absentee for absentee balloting, which we're looking to utilize um, for um, elections in the upcoming year mm -hmm. as well. So um, we anticipate that whatever comes through legislation on early voting, because we do expect something around early voting, um, for new language. Um, we also anticipate that there will be grant funds um, associated with that by the state. Any other questions on town clerk? We'll go to the finance department. Finance department, um, this again is that reconfiguration that I spoke about before between of that position between the three offices and she does uh, that position does spend the majority the a larger percentage of time in the finance department and so the we tried to adjust all of those um, so we're properly reflecting the time that she is shared between those you're going to see a savings in the highway department budget that helps to offset this um, <clears throat> and there is also some um, market um, adjustment here as well with um, with positions that have been historically substantially below market and we're starting to um, really feel some market pressure in order to retain employees and that is going that is a challenge that we have um, we could um, meet median market and I say median the middle I'm not talking about getting to the high I'm talking about get to the middle so we are attractive and we can retain our qualified, um, highly trained staff versus them leaving and us having to fill that position with somebody who's not nearly as knowledgeable, but we have to pay the higher threshold to anyway, because that's what the market demands now. Um, and you're going to see that in, I think, one of our next budgets that we get to assessor, you're going to see that has occurred within our assessor's department as well. Um, the wage market, um, as employees have um, transitioned, has uh, become quite the challenge um, for us to be able to be marketable and retain our qualified staff. So there has been strategies that I've had to implement here in order to be able to do that um, and trying to find efficiencies in other areas to help offset that cost. So just so I understand, when I see an 11% increase and a 9.4% increase, some of that is a raise increase, some of it is uh, that person might be taking on more work? Correct. Okay. It's a combination. It's not just one specific, right? It's a combination. We go to the next one. And this is the um, assessor's department. And so this is the one that in the wages department looks really weird, right? Because you see 100% negative and then 33% increase. Um, so this one we did have an, a, a, a long-term staff employee that left. 
we, when we went to go fill that position, the market range was substantially different. And in order to be able to attract in a qualified person and also look to set the town for um, se- succession planning, you know, succession planning um, for our, you know, department head level position, we needed to make an investment. Um, and I felt it was important to do so. Um, with that, we also need to address an existing staff member as well. So those are the changes largely within this department. Again, I tried to help minimize or um, soften this impact by making the decision around that grant writer position. Jill St. Clair has actually picked up a lot of the grant writing um, functions, if you will. She, you know, she sees them as a challenge. She goes after those grants. But um, she's worked very well with a lot of staff in trying to help get through some of those. But uh, we're, you know, all trying to team in together to figure out how we can best leverage our resources. And then really no other major increases through this one. The knowledge and reference is just um, um, the pricing guides guides for the uh, motor vehicles. They have to purchase all new, they have to get all new ones. Um, The legislation, it does look like they're looking at delaying the implementation of the new legislation that would move them to MSRP and then um, depreciation, largely because the vendors that program our softwares, there's three vendors, they don't have the ability to get that rolled out in enough time for that to work. So um, they are probably looking at a one-year delay, but they do need to purchase those, uh, and the manuals have gone up. Any other questions on assessors? We'll move to revenue. Revenue, you're not seeing any increase or change in salary. The revenue department is in a a bit of a, 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 a morph right now it's morphing right now so we've had two long-term employees our revenue collector and now our and our assistant revenue collector that are retiring they've been with the town for 40 years so linda newcomb our assistant revenue collector her last day was yesterday um and she has begun her her journey in through retirement so congratulations to linda um pat will be joining her in retirement here at the end of this month so we are in the process of um advertising for a revenue collector with that uh, no, with the knowledge and knowing their time frame, um, we had a clerk position open up um, back in December. I opted to, instead of hiring in just a revenue clerk, I looked to bring in a, an assistant revenue collector, go for a higher threshold individual in the hope that these two seasoned individuals could download as much possible information in three months' time. and. God love her. April's done an amazing job of just absorbing all of this information, but she comes with great qualifications as an assistant revenue collector as well, right? She's been a revenue collector now for um, a good seven years or more, seven or eight years or more. So she's been a revenue collector for a good period of time. So she um, has been acting as that assistant revenue collector. So I did not reflect any wage increases in here whatsoever because we are really in a big shift at the moment. Um, and it's really hard to determine where everything is going to necessarily settle out. I really feel that what we have here planned will be sufficient in the upcoming year. Um, but that's really where we're at. We're in this big shift and morph right now for that department, given that they haven't had those two key positions change in 40 years. You know, that's that's substantial. So, um, but the other, and the and the rest of them, the other changes in this department, pluses and minuses, but really it's around historical market trends or what we know are going to be contractual increases, like around the printing, the cost for printing, the annual tax bills are just going up. And that's what we've gotten from our vendor. I've got one question. On the technical line, looking at this year, um, you had approved, the the approved budget was uh, 50,840, and then we came in 13,000 higher. Um, What was the reasoning why we came in so much higher and why is that not projected to carry forward? Because, so that's a good question. The reason why for this year is because instead of hiring the revenue clerk, which would have gone into clerical, we hired an assistant revenue collector, which goes into the technical line, right? So it's just hiring that higher skill level in the, into this into that um, budget line. So it's just the shift within that budget line for that. Going into the next, going forward, we would only have one assistant revenue collector. We don't need to have two. We would only have one assistant revenue collector. So that would drop back down to the more normal um, range. 
um, with a revenue collector, an assistant revenue collector, the revenue clerk, which that line now gets filled at its full capacity, and then um, the um, we have a we would have a part time accounts manager. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, a lot of shifting and moving in that department. The next one is registrars <clears throat> and polling. Um, not uh, not a significant um, any significant changes on this one. Um, the registrars had requested some increases to um, stipends for election and poll workers, which is what you're seeing in the in the department column of the 41,000. I brought it back down to 35 because we do have the additional funds still remaining from that absentee balance absentee ballot grant so we can utilize those to help offset that so we didn't need to build that within this budget so that was the the change there but overall um, everything else is basically historical trend any questions on this one next one is nine town commissions and service agencies um, really n not a lot of changes on this one. Your two decreases, one housing authority, that again is based solely on our calculation for sewer. So that is what we determined is what their sewer bill is going to be for the upcoming year, and that's what we budget for that expenditure. It is less than what it was last year. Again, they had a lower debt service number. We've also transitioned from contract operator to employee base, right? So there's some shifts there. The, la the other one that has a significant dec or a decrease is permanent building commission, and that is largely because um, they no longer, so previously they were paying a recording secretary. Um, the staff liaison, Mary Brom, is performing those recording secretary duties, and so she doesn't receive any additional payment for that. None of our staff liaisons, when we, when we perform as recording secretaries, receive any additional payment for that, so that's a savings um, to the commission. Planning and development. Again, this department in the personnel line has had some shifts and moves. We've had some employees that have left, and we've had some employees that have come in at different at different wage rates, um, and then also um, <clears throat> a couple of s more minor adjustments related to market impact in order to retain those qualified staff that we would otherwise pay significantly more in the market on. Um, so that's the impact to there. Any questions? Going to 11. Information technology. This is all things IT. Everything IT. All of our software, all of our um, back-end um, networking support. So really the increases here is largely Microsoft Office jacked up their renewal costs pretty substantially this upcoming year. Um, and we're stuck with it. I don't know that there's any way to get around Microsoft Office. If anybody has an alternative to Microsoft Office, I'm listening, but boy, I, I haven't found one yet. Um, the other one is uh, Novus for the first time in about four years has actually uh, brought forward an increase and it's about a 3%. So um, that's reflected here as well. But um, the largest increase there is really uh, Microsoft Office. Um. Now, I know we were looking at implementing having the uh, ledger online yes. available. Um, That's in here. That we're, is. And we are working on it. I promise you that we are working on it. We have the, we have the vendor identified. Yep. Unfortunately, the timing of when it became identified, um, it is right in the middle of budget and now audit at the same time. And finance only has so, many, so much time in a day. And I have not prioritized that when I want audit done first. Yeah. Understandable. So, that's my priority. She knows it. It'll be, it'll <laughs> but the cost of that is reflected. The cost is reflected okay. in here, and we're maintaining that going forward. Our intention is that hopefully over the summertime, we can potentially get that rolled out. It's about a three-month implementation time frame with the vendor, so probably late summer, maybe early fall, we'll be able to get it out on a public facing. And there are, yeah, there are some details. There are some details, too, um, that we might be able to get up quicker related to, like, um, our accounts payable, you know, right. when we pay bills and those types of things, vendor information, payments to vendors, we might be able to get that up sooner before the whole suite. So that's another option we're going to look into if possible. So as we can release things, we will, but um, she hasn't kicked me yet. So thank you. All right, going moving on. 
town hall building. Town hall building, you're seeing a lot of decreases here because we're recognizing that we will likely have, we will have savings in this building because with the law enforcement moving, which we will be in the next month closing, we're getting ready to, we're preparing our closing documents for 26 Soap Street right now. Um, the seller has been able to um, come to a resolution, or at least around that transaction. Um, and we have a path forward on that. So we are going to be closing on that building here shortly, which means this building will now be able to go almost in a sleep mode over the weekends, which um, because we will no longer have law enforcement in here um, for such long periods of time, meaning so we're going to have some savings here. We've adjusted for those savings. The other the due to CNR last year, we had done a special we had done an increased ask in CNR because of a vehicle replacement that needed to be done and we needed additional funding in order to make that vehicle replacement happen because of market rate changes. We clearly have done that. We don't need to ask for that additional any longer. So we've dropped that, that out. Any other, any questions? No, I, as far as the CNR, um, are we increasing the amount of that because the cost of vehicles is not going down anytime soon. Correct. So um, are we increasing it? No, we are not increasing it. But what we are doing is uh, a few different things. Number one, we're looking at um, vehicles life to determine, you know, um, and typically we've done this over over the years as well. You know, a vehicle just because we have it on there for a 10 year life expectancy doesn't mean that we, we replace it at year 10. I, we, I always evaluate the vehicle, which means I sit down with our highway director and determine what is the performance of that vehicle. How many miles are on that vehicle? How is it actually performing, right? Um, and if what, it, what is the replacement cost? What is it actually going to cost to replace it? What do we actually need to replace it with, right? I ask a whole lot of questions. Matt gets really sick of me. But it's okay. Um, and uh, we, make, we make a determination as to whether or not it gets replaced or whether or not it needs to wait a year or two, right? And so parks uh, in the CNR this year, one of the parks vehicles, pickup trucks, is a prime example. That actually was due for replacement on the CNR three years ago. It was running fine, though. It wasn't really showing any substantial... Um, um, deficiencies. We weren't really running into any severe me mechanical problems or anything like that. And even back then, market was challenging. So um, we've pushed it out. We will have enough in this upcoming budget year in order to be able to replace that. Um, some of the other steps that we've taken for some of the more higher price vehicles that when that when that percentage jump happens, it's a lot more like the dump trucks, right? You know, they've when I started here in 2009 and 10, we were paying $145,000 for a dump truck. Now it's $245,000, right? Um, that's pretty substantial. And there's no way you can build that into a depreciation schedule and increase your CNR for that. But one thing that we've done, and the council supported this last year, is what we had residual remaining unspent of highway collective funds at the end of the year, we transferred those into the CNR fund in order to be able to make up those differences. So as the town um, is able to under, you know, not spend all of that, all any of, you know, not fully expend the funds at the end of the year, we would look to the town council to potentially move that into the CNR to help bridge those gaps, right? And help make up that depreciation change. And I know one thing we have been looking into in the past was putting in a wash bay, which um, with a wash bay, I mean, granted, it doesn't affect the mileage of the vehicle, but it, um, it can reduce substantially the amount of corrosion and mm -hmm. wear and tear we're seeing underneath the vehicle. Yes. Um, so that's something I, I think we should still continue to look at doing. I completely agree. Um, the cost of the wash bay is likely something that we would, you know, if – that may be something that we can fund through that capital project investment um, on an ongoing forward basis with the additional revenue from Lake Road Generating. That would be a great way to help get to that actual funding because that's 100% town funded and that would be a, a bond issuance. That would be you know, a pretty substantial uh, cost impact because we have to build an entire building plus the wash bay system itself. Um, we have been... Um, doing some minor, and I will call it minor, washing of vehicles inside our building. We actually have created, no, we've created a whole trap around it, um, and we've created a, 
an interior, but it is not, it's detrimental to the interior of our building because you have a lot of moisture that you're entering into that building, right? So for the longevity of the building itself and overall for the fleet, I used to run a public bus company and I used to spec out, I spec out a wash bay. I used to watch what wash bays can and can't do for, um, for vehicles. Um, it would be substantially better, not just for our highway fleet, but for our bus fleet, right? Um, and it could be a potential revenue source. You could potentially look to, you know, add, depending on um, how much downtime availability you would have for that vehicle, for that bay, you would potentially be able to have other towns or, you know, other agencies be able to still utilize it and generate a small, not a huge amount of revenue, but a small amount of revenue to maybe offset a little bit of the operational costs, right? But it would be a great resource to have. Um, so it is still on our capital improvement plan someday. It's been on the capital improvement plan since I got here in 2009. Just saying. It'll get there. Um, economic development. There's no change on this. You're not seeing any, any change on the um, <coughs> personnel line because that is a non-union position. And again, we handle all non-union positions. In July, all of those increases are built into the contingency budget at the end of this budget. Um, you do that transfer in July when we handle that. But there's no changes to this budget. <clears throat> Highway supervision, you're seeing that decrease in clerical. So this is that shared position that we, <clears throat> she, she does so well, our shared, our shared person. She's an amazing, she's an amazing individual. She does really good. So um, this is managing that shared position. Um, so we were able to provide some savings here and then just kind of going through historical view. What do we really need um, and where will really have we landed over the course of time on each of those individual line items? So that's provided a savings overall. <clears throat> Any questions? None? Engineering. Engineering um, is just contractual wage increases. So those are just based on union contracts. Um, and then we do have a reduction to repair and maintenance supplies. Um, just Basically, looking at historical trends, um, some of the other uh, some of the other buildings have their own repair and maintenance that it gets charged to the directly to the buildings, so it doesn't all have to hit here. And they do manage to do um, a fair amount of our capital projects, so we are able to build that out to capital projects for materials as opposed to having to build that specific line item. It goes to like a LOSIP project. Um, we are able to do it that way. Um, the next one is central garage. Central garage wages is union contract increases under contractual services. <clears throat> the contractual services support, that's really to trust, try and bring it more closely in line to what we're actually seeing for spend, right? That's just the reality of what the actual contractual services expend is. Um, we have some decreases in some other line items based on historical trends. We're able to move those. The clothing, we actually transitioned their uniform company to a new uniform company that provided a substantial savings. Um, and I will say the staff is much happier with this new um, uniform company as opposed to the previous one. And I've seen a lot of uniform. Everybody usually loves them in the beginning and hates them about two years in, right? But for now, we have a savings. But for right now, we have a savings, right? So... But uh, so, so we were able to achieve a savings there. And then um, the repair and maintenance supplies, um, that is, um, I'm sorry, repair parts is the other increase. That is um, moving the parks. So parks, we had parts sitting out in the parks, depart parks department, also had a parts line item. Say that five times fast. Um, and what was happening is, is they weren't always necessarily remembering to charge out like the filter that went to parks, you know, the parks pickup truck over to the parks, right? It just, we've moved all of our fleet to this budget. They are the fleet managers. They manage and maintain the entire fleet. So we're just going to put all of our parts here. It makes more sense. So that's what you're seeing here. So you see a reduction, you'll see a reduction in the parks budget around that, but that's what that is. Highway maintenance. <clears throat> so
So uh, highway maintenance, the first part of the labor is just contractual wage increase. The second one, overtime. So overtime, this is really to bring it to be more reflective of what we're seeing on an ongoing basis. We have been get, they've been getting a lot of calls out for wind events. So much more wind events than we, we were having, you know, five and 10 years ago. Um, and those, you know, typically we would only, ha they would get called out for snow events and it would go to the winter overtime budget. Anything that's not a snow event comes to this budget. This is a lot of wind events that we've been getting and down trees from wind events. So we need to recognize that increased usage of overtime because unfortunately the wind likes to blow at night. And they get called out in the middle of the night or on Saturday and Sunday and all that. So that's what that increases for. The shift, the contractual services support increase of 7,000 is offset by the calcium decrease of 4,500. So the calcium, we've, we've out, we've, we're outsourcing the application of calcium for our um, dirt roads. Um, it's far more effective. Um, while we can do it in-house, it's not near, it's cumbersome and it's not nearly as good of an application. Um, it's far more effective for it to be outsourced and to be done in that manner. Um, so part of that 7,000 is this 4,500 shift up. It's not costing us any more. The other portion of that is just inflationary increases that they've had in other contractual services contracts. But um, that's, that's predominantly that shift. Um, and then again, you're seeing the road renewal, you're seeing um, the same levels of our, of our road renewals year over year. Another comment there. They also do a, a lot of in-kind services. They help out the sewer department. They do. Um, with some mowing and whatnot. Um, they help out Board of Ed, too. I was going to get to that. Yeah. There's whatever things going on there. Also, they put out the voting signs, which they do. I keep getting comments from the high. Why are we involved with voting? But I said, we need someone to put the signs out. So they're the elected. Uh, uh, you're the end of the list. If you have vehicles, you can put the signs out. So they do some other things. They don't get credit for us. So I think we've got to give them a, a, a little credit for that. Yeah, you know, I will say I, I am always incredibly impressed with our highway department with the amount of um, projects that they take on. Um, and, you know, having, you know, some of some of our staff is new to Killingly and have they've worked with uh, they've worked in other towns and we bring them in, you know, some of our new staff we bring into these capital project meetings and they're used to having to go and find consultants or contractors or whatever. And I'm like, all right, Matt, can your team like can, like the parking lot at Westfield Avenue, um, the gravel parking lot and taking all the trees down and everything like that? Um, highway can do all of that. Right. That's that's. Um, saves the town a ton of money because we're not having to contract out for all of that. We have manpower that can do that. We have resources that can do that. We're only having to pay material. Obviously, we're paying wages, right? Clearly, we're paying wages, but they're on staff. But we're not having to pay for a contractor to come in and profit margins above that. Um, they do phenomenal work. They put they put in, um, you know, their drainage systems. They're you. They've they can do an entire street. They they can do everything on a road, um, which is not tip. You know, you don't typically see that. It's very hard to compare like our highway department to some of our other neighboring town highway departments because they're vastly different. Our highway department is really a construction crew and a tree crew. I mean, we can send out two full crews of tree crews and they can go out and hit the town as full solid tree crews. Most towns around us can't do that. They don't have those resources. We have great talent in our highway department. So um, thank you for giving them a shout out. No, they really deserve it. That's, yeah, when I'm in there, I, you know, we always have this discussion, especially about the, when it comes around voting, I, that's, I have to you know, <laughs> make advantage. Yeah. Um, the other thing is like a lot of times when, they, when there's uh, you know, power down and, and whatnot, um, the signage, they put signage out. The last time I got some grief was that they didn't put the signs out at the ends of the streets people had to drive to the particular area well when you have trees down and within like you said they're called out on overtime yeah. something's down at four o'clock in the morning they're out there within an hour closing off the roads where the incident is yes we don't have enough time to go out and close the road off like at, on upper maple street i have people complaining to me that they had to drive all the way to the work area that they should have put signs out at 101 
and at Lake Road. Wait a minute. What, these guys are out in the middle of the night. They're doing what they have to do. They're keeping the road safe. And it's cleaned up within an hour. You, you know. Yeah. But, I mean. They, they do their best judgment so on where they can they close. They really do a lot. And, right. Uh, um, winter maintenance, um, we have maintained the same level of funding for winter maintenance. I will let you know that the winter maintenance reserve, we've still not had to utilize that. This year we had, we had a wonderful winter this winter, right? It was wonderful. Um, our salt shed is fully stocked. Um, uh, and so, um, you know, there is, you know, possibility that, you know, if the council chose to, you know, make some reduction at, uh, on the level of salt that, you know, I think would be reasonable given where we are within the um, winter and where we are within the um, reserves. Um, I think that that, you know, could be something um, for discussion. Maybe a comment on the, on the, the salt issue. I know last year with the state pier closing where they had salt down there, is there an increase in transportation to bring the salt to our salt chain. Is that so um, we there? have had an in um, we did have an increase in um, salt costs and I don't remember exactly what it was off the top of my head but it wasn't substantial um, and we've already put in our bid for consumption for next year so um, I, I don't think that we're, we have any substantial impact on that um, for transportation. Where, where, where we have to go to get it? Is we actually problem? put in two. Okay. That, this one. We cover ourselves. No, we don't stick yeah. with just one because you never know when they're going to shut down the pier on you, yeah, right? That's... And that did happen, and a lot of municipalities were stuck. Right. Right. But we were okay because we already had a contract with the other pier. And so we were able to get into the other pier and get our salt from the other pier, right? Mm -hmm. So we actually go off of both piers. Um, so we do the New Haven pier and we do the Providence pier. Um, so we do both, um, and so we do reduced quantities out of both, um, so that way, number one, we're not overcommitting. We don't want to have to buy out a salt contract, um, especially if we have a really light winter. Um, but also, we have a we have a dual relationship. Um, Providence is a lot close is a lot of, you know it's a lot closer than the New Haven one, but we do try and keep relationship with both. <clears throat> going into recreation administration and programs. So this budget um, has a couple of impacts on this one. Number one, he is projecting a higher revenue um, than what he is in the, in, in the current year. Um, and that is largely in some expansion around uh, summer camp. He wants to be able to increase summer camp slots, which would also provide some revenue. Um, <clears throat> but also to do some um, um, some additional programs that would generate those revenues. Um, with regards to wages, um, two impacts, two uh, major impacts through here. Number one, this is one of the departments that gets, gets hit with minimum wage. So we have automatically need to move up. A lot of those summer camp employees um, are minimum wage employees. Those will automatically have to jump. So we have the minimum wage um, impact on that. Um, and then we have uh, we had some we have some shift with regards to the technical. We had some shift within that um, staffing, um, and that's meeting um, current wage demands um, in that in that space as well. So, a um, couple of different impacts um, on that budget for those. The contractual services support that is largely that increase is. Last year, the last two years, they they've really had a substan they've had a difficulty getting referees for youth hoop, um, uh, and so they are looking at potentially having to go back to contracting for referees again through the board the board certified program, um, and with 200 games, that's a lot of games. I mean, you know, I never really thought about how many youth hoop games we have, but 200 games is a lot of games that um, we need to, you know, have referees for. So um, that's part of that impact. The other part of that impact is partially offset by revenues because they're also looking at doing some um, additional field trips or modify uh, uh, changes in field trips for summer camp to kind of make summer camp a little bit more attractive. Um, so that's the, uh, the secondary impact there. 
does the highway department get involved too much with, with Rick, like with maintenance of parks? with like Cat We Hall work very things? closely with, so the recreation, uh, the parks department and the highway department work very closely together on um the on the parks i will say that when it comes to they would they they come into play when um parks needs assistance for you know like if there's trees that need to come down or you know major um maintenance or um overhauling that needs to get done and they need the heavier equipment that's usually when they bring highway in (laughs) or if we're going to designate a large capital project for instance we were talking about putting up the pavilion and the splash pad all of that we were talking about doing with the town highway crew as opposed to, so the parks department doesn't necessarily do those. So, well, it, But they work in conjunction with each other. So well, everybody sits highway, around the table. Credit with the recreation. That's why oh, yeah. So yep. We pull highway into everything. Well, they have to get acknowledged <laughs> for that. So. Yeah, right. um, I got a question on that one, Mary. So uh, just so I can get a picture of what this department looks like, by looking at the spreadsheet. So you've got an administrator, then you've got clerical on uh, permanent and seasonal staff. Like what does that staffing look like, technical? Um, so the seasonal staff is largely all of your you, your summer camp employees, but also think um, just general programming staff, somebody that may come in and do uh, yoga programs um, or somebody that may come in and do um, lessons for something else. Um, that's what typically that's what your seasonal staff is. Your technical staff is the assistant recreation director and the recreation supervisor. Those two uh, employees. Is, that's all that's in those two, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, the clerical is actually reflecting. Um, two part-time clerical positions and a full-time clerical position yep and then overtime has also been increased to be a bit more reflective of what they've been doing for overtime um we've been doing managing a lot more um of the um events in you know on the day of the event with actual staff as opposed to volunteers sometimes the volunteers don't Um, don't come through on the day of the event and so our staff is there Um, so we we upped the overtime line for that any other questions on recreation all right we will move over to parks and grounds parks and grounds doesn't really have much for change contractual wage change Um, the increase to the rental equipment and facilities is just around the Porta Johns, um, we have to bring. We have added those down to the Westfield Avenue by the tennis courts, um, and um, the fees on those are increasing. So that's the increase around that. Um, we've been able to kind of shift some of the landscaping operating supplies. That's just been a shift, um, but that's essentially parks and grounds. Um, I'll say this in preparation for next year. Um, because I didn't reflect it in this year's budget, but for next year, I would expect that I'm going to be pro- I'm going to be proposing an additional full-time staff person. So right now we have two full-time staff members year-round in this budget, and we have two seasonal staff persons. Next, uh, for the subsequent year's budget, we're really going to be looking at bringing on Westfield Avenue under our umbrella for maintenance, which means now we have a whole nother facility for grounds that needs to be kept up. Um, we really should look at adding a, the, uh, one of the, uh, an additional full-time position uh, to manage all of that additional space as well. So um, I, I'll caveat that. I'll prep you for next year. It'll be in there. But for right now, because um, we're not adding that space at this point in time, we're, we're staying with where we're at, but know that that's, that's right there at the, at the cusp. Is there, is there anything? discussion about doing something with the tennis courts modifying a tennis court yep for a that's in the capital project so we did in the current fiscal year we budgeted money to um, refresh the front courts to establish uh, and uh, have them be pickleball courts for the front courts and then in the in this capital project we also this capital improvement plan we have additional funds um, designated for 
renovating because the back courts you can't refresh those those need a full renovation those are half being swallowed by vegetation at this moment so um those are going to have to be fully renovated um so we have funds in to renovate the rear courts that being said it's possible that we decide to once we get through that entire plan to shift and make pickleball be the rear courts and the basketball be the front courts because the basketball courts would then be the more highly visible courts and just giving demographics of the utilization it makes sense to put those um, they wouldn't be as competing usually the people that are playing um, basketball also have music playing and stuff like that the rear courts are like right behind a residential home the front courts are a little bit offset from that so um, it would just provide a little bit more buffer I have heard complaints recently about the noise that comes from pickleball courts as well. Oh, good uh, to know. Being pretty substantial. I haven't heard. I haven't heard that. I'll have to check that out. Good to know. So we would have to look at buffering on that. Um, if everybody's good, we'll go to public library. Well, wait a minute. Oh, the, the dog park. Who, who is responsible for that? Parks. Okay. Parks manages the dog dog park. The whole River Trail. The Whole River Trail, the Dog Park, Owen Bell, Davis Park, Lions Park, uh, Cat Hollow. Um, I know I'm missing some. I wouldn't, gonna mind, be like, I wouldn't mind sometime, Mary, getting a little sheet with that. So I'll get we your know. list. Thank you. Get your list. Plus all of the exteriors of the town buildings. So with the River Trail expansion, so that's... that's That'll be them. That'll be part of here, too. Yes. Anything else on parks? Go to public library. Public library has had, a, yeah, this is another department that had some shift within staff over the past year. Um, so we've had some movement there. While this position this position this department also is impacted by minimum wage with all of the other shifts that have occurred we're able to kind of um, absorb that within all of these shifts that are occurring um, their contractual services support is um there they had had an in-house it individual um, that person um segued out after doing an evaluation we determined it was best for them to fall under the novus um, network support um, we also pulled them off of bibliomation's network support so bibliomation is a statewide service their circulation uh, book circulation is through them as well but we found some critical holes in their network service uh, their their back-end patches that they were providing to the library and so with Novus taking that over, um, that's going to be an additional 24000 We believe that there will be some savings in Bibliomation, but we have not identified what those savings are as of yet. So I would expect next year that we'll be able to uh, articulate better what those savings are. But we have just started to make that transition off of Bibliomation, and it's been a bit on the challenging side. So um, this is reflecting Novus. Um, so if you really wanted to understand what is that um, minimum wage impact to this budget, if you take that 17000 and offset it by the 24, that increase there, that's really what your minimum wage impact is. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions there? Um, civic and cultural events is the same. There's no difference there. Everything is the same. We'll move to the community center. Community center is we're keeping this as you know minimal as we possibly can, given that we're looking at getting them transitioned over. Um, so we're trying to follow closely the historical trends. Um, labor is their part-time custodian, and that is contractual wage increase. Any other questions there? Is there any reduction in the community center? You know, people, are, are they still going there for the same? Uh, oh, absolutely. Amount? They're actually, their programs are expanding. So um, they're, they now have a um, weekly pickleball pickup game that occurs in the gymnasium, and that's 
garnering a fair amount of participation. The senior movies on Wednesday nights um, has, I think they were up to, Wednesday afternoons, they were up to um, 80 um, seniors that attended that um, last week, last week, the week before. So they're back up to their normal levels of functioning. They have a lot of activity that's happening in that space. And when is the anticipated um, completion of the Westfield Avenue project? Yeah, so Westfield Avenue, um, it, 18 months. We're, we're look, really looking at 18 months. We're still in design. The Permanent Building Commission has authorized the exterior envelope improvements. So uh, brick veneer repair, windows, and roof. Um, that will uh, that will complete the that major exterior piece. So we're in the we're in final design phases to be able to then present what is the package for the interior renovations. I will say we you know we are going to prioritize what those really are going to need to be in order to be able to stay within budget. Um, but it you know it's been challenging on all sides of the fence. It's you know recreation is very heavily an active uh, program and there's a lot of other active programs in that building going on at the same time so you know there's there's a lot of gives and takes around space right now but we're getting there um, and I I'm just trying to be cognizant of time and you tell me where you want me to stop stop I'm at other town buildings I don't know if we can I can keep going. You tell me when you're ready for me to stop. When do you want me to stop? Uh, okay. That's fine. <clears throat> so other town buildings were remaining flat, and that is really the, um, managing the costs for the Bugby building, um, and we've been trending um, fine with those. Any questions on that one? Yeah, that's all. We've got the new new system in there, and that's been working fine. Matt Salsi goes over there periodically when they have to have an adjustment. But it's been working well. Any other questions on that one? If not, we'll go to building safety and inspections. This is the building office, so building office and fire marshals on this one. <clears throat> and this is, uh, so we have um, the... Um, personnel costs is, uh, that increase is for, due to wage, uh, contractual wage increases. The overtime, the increase that you're seeing there is uh, largely to do, we've been getting, as you see in the current year, um, and even in the 21-22 year, you're seeing that there is a lot more overtime, a lot more calls out for our Deputy fire marshals and our assistant building official has been getting called out um, as well um, to manage some of the um, calls. Those would have to be on an overtime basis. So we are trying to reflect what that call volume is actually looking for, looking at on those um, off hour time frames. Um, the rest of this is just um, Reflecting, so the current year, um, there's a decrease in knowledge and reference because they bought, they, we had increased it in the current year because of new code books. Um, they purchased the new code books. Thankfully, they don't have another new set of code books coming out a year later. So we don't have to buy another new set of code books. That's the decrease. So you, you were talking about off hour call outs. Yeah. Who, who calls, how does that happen? What, for what State police would potentially call them out. So if there's an impact to a structure, say a fire, and the building official has to deem it un an unsafe structure, or a vehicle has crashed into the side of a building, and the, the state police will call out um, the, the available official to deem the, you know, what's going on. If there's a, you know, if there's... Um, a gas leak or you know different things we have to go through those steps so th they're called out on an emergency basis right that and the uh, fire departments as well will request yes. the fire marshal or building inspector or both yep um as needed mm -hmm. as yep. well i do yep. have one question on that page um uh, down under capital outlay um i saw that there was a uh, uh, equipment non-vehicular yep um department requested fifty-seven thousand, but you would cut that out um, what was that? So they were looking for an additional truck. Right now, the two, the deputy 
one of the deputies is using his personal vehicle. Um, the other deputy is using one of the smaller vehicles. What they were looking for is a truck because as everyone is aware with fire um, <clears throat> equipment um, and turnout gear, it should not be housed inside the cab or inside the space of a vehicle in which you're operating in. It really should be in the bed of a truck um, if you have to transport it. Um, for uh, health and safety reasons. So they were asking for a truck. What we did was instead of having to purchase an additional truck, what we've done is we've looked at our fleet and we're able to shift around some of our fleet by purchasing one of the new pieces, one of the new um, vehicles that was authorized. We'll be able to turn over the building officials truck to the fire department, to the fire marshals, They'll then have a truck. They'll be able to have all their turnout gear in the truck. Um, and uh, the building official will then have um, an SUV type vehicle, which he doesn't have turnout gear and that type of stuff. He can work appropriately out of, a, out of an SUV type vehicle. And it's just how can we best maximize our fleet um, without having to buy um, a bunch of different vehicles. So that's what we did was we prioritized the fleet and reshifted um, who's driving what. And so we're hoping that we'll be able to make that shift complete once we're able to actually purchase vehicles. Right now, the state um, bid, the state um, list is locked. You can't, you can't get on, you can't purchase a vehicle right now off the state bid list. Um, that program is still locked. Um, Matt's been calling, I think, every two weeks to say, can I get a vehicle? Can I be, a, you know, we have a list of vehicles that he needs to um, effectuate per, uh, procurement on. So he's working on those, but that's what we're doing with this. So instead of having to purchase this vehicle here, we had other vehicles that were gonna be coming off of that frontline status that can go the uh, deputy fire marshal as part-time um, and move it into a, uh, a lower utilization. Thank you. They drive by it, yep. You know, because it's, it's out there, which they should be taken care of. I mean, it, these things are hanging on so long, but, I mean, and it does affect time that these guys could be doing something else. It does. That's the point that I'm trying to make. And I will say, so, yes, they drive by it, but also, you know, our highway department drives by it, too, and other staff drives by it. Our zoning enforcement officer drives by, the, drives by them as well. And so as any of us as town employees, if we see something awry with the property, we know who to get a hold of. We immediately go down there and say, hey, you need to go out and check Ty Basil's fence because it looks like a section is blown over, right? And they immediately take action. So they don't always necessarily have to go out themselves our our collective staff takes it upon ourselves to always be looking at these properties um, to just be helpful. And um, like on Ty Basil, the town is still paying for the fence, but we're getting reimbursed. We are. The Ty Basil Correct. Fence. They've been paying for it. But it, again, it, how can we push these along? I mean, <laughs> both of them, the 11th so, April Street's been a nightmare. I don't know how bad Ty Basil is, but I mean, it's, right. it, it, we have to still be of well, that. 11 Maple Street is coming to fruition. Well, right. that was in the Finally, yeah. that one's coming yes. to fruition. Yes. Um, and, you know, we continue to uh, push on um, the owners of the other properties to try and get them moved forward and, and fully cleaned up and abated. So um, it does, unfortunately, take time. Sometimes Property owners are fast, like the one at the end of Maple, uh, the one at the end of Main Street when that fire occurred. That property was cleaned up really in short order. Sometimes that is the case. Other times, you run into um, litigation or legal issues that um, slow that process. No, I mean it does. Our people still have to be involved with that. It's like yeah, they do, no. and we have to continue to monitor it and all of that. I'm going to quickly do animal control and then we'll be done, right? Okay, animal control. This is the value that was sent to us by NECOG. It's their per capita fee. It is increased due to 
um, the increased cost of veterinary care and um, feed for the animals, um, which veterinary care has increased pretty substantially over the last uh, two years. Um, and typically, I will say that this program has, you know, rate uh, remained, if you can see in the previous years, relatively flat. This is really the first um, of any real substantial increase to this program in quite some time. And with that, I will put a marker on law enforcement, and that's where we're going to pick up on Monday. So close. Thank you, Jason. Just real quick, a uh, generalized comment for a lot of what you've already said. Um, you know, I, I can appreciate the fact that um, you're having to up everything due to market increases and things like that to bring your staff to the median. Um, you know, I think of what I go through with uh, my line of work there and we're doing the same thing what I was paid 10 years ago to start is now ten dollars more an hour so yeah. I can definitely have an appreciation for that and yeah. understanding of why you're doing what you're doing right. so I, I thank you and I appreciate you I appreciate that comment it is definitely been a struggle and a challenge um, I think I've lost a lot of sleep over that one this past year um, just because it is really hard and it's hard to balance with all the staff that's been here for years you know when you have staff that's been here for 30 and 40 years there's no way they're ever keeping pace with that market um, and it, it's it becomes an inequity and how do you adjust how do you address that inequity so I appreciate that thank you um, at this time, I will entertain a motion to take a 10-minute recess. So moved. Second. <clears throat> motion has been made by Mr. Grandelsky, seconded by Mr. Wood. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are going in a recess for 10 minutes, and we will return at 10 a.m. <laughs>